All new on the WHAS 11 night team, city streets in Louisville are going to be changing. But it's been that way for years, but a lot of people won't want it done. I mean, they're going to do it, do it. Get ready for more two-way streets downtown and right into old Louisville. And this time, the money is coming from Mitch McConnell. We have reaction to the investment from city residents. Plus... The mayor helps light the menorah tonight at JCC, celebrating the eight days of Hanukkah. Right now, all new on the WHAS 11 Night Team. From one way to two, Louisville is focusing on second and third streets now in the latest effort to make the city streets safer. Hello, everybody, and thanks for staying up a little late with us after Monday Night Football. I'm Doug Prophet. It's Senator Mitch McConnell who announced this new federal funding today for the conversion from Broadway downtown south right to the University of Louisville. WHS 11 night teams Taylor Woods and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie talked to a homeowner who has lived on this busy corridor for more than four decades. It's been the topic of discussion for years, the safety of one-way streets. The city has received federal funding to improve and convert second and third streets to two-way. Center down there, they got cars on both sides and you got to ride out in the street down there. In his 40 years living in Old Louisville, Bill Miller has seen several wrecks on Second Street, currently a one-way street. They come down here, and they don't stop for the stop sign, they just run on out there. It's why he's excited about the new plan to transform 2nd and 3rd streets in this area to two-way streets. Monday, Senator Mitch McConnell announced $7.5 million in federal funding for the conversion. The project will also add bike lanes and safety improvements. Miller hopes the project will lessen accidents of parked cars like his daughter's in front of his house. They told him twice their car sitting out here Somebody come down the street and hit in the back. It's part of Vision Zero Louisville's plan to eliminate traffic deaths on streets by 2050. It's going to improve neighborhoods. It's really part of our effort to make our streets safer for cars and also for people. Mayor Craig Greenberg says this investment would not be possible without the members of Kentucky's congressional delegation. Streets should be a safe place to be. And this conversion to two-way streets on 2nd and 3rd is a wonderful step in that direction. This safer road project gives homeowners like Miller a sense of peace. I mean, they're going to do it, do it. Construction is expected to begin in the next few years in 2026. In Louisville, Taylor Woods, WHAS 1119 on your side. In addition to the federal funding, Louisville Metro government and the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet will each put $2.5 million toward this project. That will bring the total investment to $12.5 million. Right now, all new on the WHS 11 night team, Jefferson County School Board has appointed its newest member. All in favor, say aye or indicate, raise your hands. Ayes have it. We would like uh, to welcome Ms. Gail Strange as the new District 1 representative on the Jefferson County Board of Education. School board tonight selecting Gail Strange right here to represent district number one after interviewing four candidates. This district includes much of West Louisville, downtown, and the Butchertown area. Strange replaces the former chairwoman, Diane Porter, who stepped down in October to focus on her health. Strange has a history in corporate communications and says one of her main goals is closing the achievement gap for students of color. She was sworn in immediately after tonight's meeting. In depth tonight on the WHAS 11 night team, for more than eight years, this has been a critical piece of evidence in the Crystal Rogers case. Her car abandoned right on the side of the Bluegrass Parkway with her keys, phone and purse inside. Tonight, for the first time, we're hearing details on how it could have ended up right there. Those answers are coming from a new interview with the attorney for the newly arrested Steve Lawson. He tells our Shane McAllister Lawson had nothing to do with the death of Crystal, Crystal Rogers, but was instead providing police with critical information. I did not hurt Crystal and was not involved in hurting Crystal. I didn't plan to hurt Crystal. I didn't conspire to hurt Crystal. Those are his statements. Attorney Theodore Lavitt says his client, Steve Lawson, wasn't involved in the death of Crystal Rogers. He was an employee, part-time employee, 
of Hauk. He had an association with Hauk. Mr. Hauk uh, had conversations with him uh, about Crystal. Uh, and uh, that's the extent of my client's involvement. Conversations like this one. Hey, Steve. Yeah. From inside the Nelson County Sheriff's Office interrogation room, just days after Crystal was first reported missing. I certainly, I said it is a very difficult and trying time, but I appreciate you. Uh, you saying that? What do you make of that phone call? It was a set up phone call. Uh, one was supposed to call the other and the, the ring came in and they spoke. The attorney says Steve wasn't involved in the murder, but that he does have valuable information. Information shared with police over more than a dozen meetings throughout the last year. They chose to indict him rather than give him the immunity that he was promised. Oh, so he had been in discussions with them. He has and I have regarding some sort of deal? It's immunity. To Tr say what he knows. What, what, what's known as transactional immunity. Lavitt says Steve's information dates back to the weekend Crystal disappeared. When Crystal's maroon sedan, later towed away as evidence by the FBI, was abandoned on the Bluegrass Parkway with her keys, phone and purse inside. The attorney says it was Joseph Lawson, Steve's son, who drove the car to the highway. It was driven out there by uh, uh, Joey, Joey Lawson. He had a flat tire at that mile marker and uh, my client uh, received a phone call, went out there and got him, brought him back. The attorney says Steve doesn't know where the car was going or why his son was driving it. But he does have reason to believe police have built a case around solicitation. Do you think that Brooks Hauk paid Joseph Lawson to help in the murder of Crystal Rogers? I think the Commonwealth has been trying to establish that a payment was made as to who that payment was made to and when it was made, I'm not privy to that information yet. But the attorney thinks that information could soon be made public, pointing to next week's court date, when Steve Lawson will go in front of a Nelson County judge for the first time. At Brooks Hauk's arraignment, there was a lot of bombshells dropped. Do you think we'll hear something similar? I do, I do, and as we move on, you know, the Commonwealth's ready to move on after all these eight and a half years. I would say that uh, we're, start gonna, we're, we're gonna hear some things in court that we haven't heard before. And even more stunning new details there tonight. Well, Steve Lawson's arraignment is scheduled for December 21st. That is next Thursday. Jury selection began today in the trial against triple murder suspect Bryce Rhodes of Louisville. He's accused of killing 14-year-old Larry Ordway and 16-year-old Maurice Gordon after investigators say they saw him kill 40-year-old Christopher Jones in 2016. Rhodes has a history of outbursts in court and was told that that would not be tolerated during the trial. On Friday, Judge Julie Kalin said if Rhodes causes a disturbance, he can sit outside the courtroom or wear a handcuff deputies can also use to shock him. The jury selection process continues tomorrow morning. Opening statements could begin as early as tomorrow afternoon. The setup is nearly complete for Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir's inauguration tomorrow in Frankfurt, the second inauguration for Bashir. Stages and chairs are now installed in front of the Capitol building. This is where he will be publicly sworn in for the second term. That ceremony follows the inaugural parade, which begins at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning in Frankfurt. WHAS 11 News will bring you team coverage tomorrow, and you can watch both events live tomorrow on WHAS11.com, again, as they are happening on our website. Inaugur inauguration Day coverage from us, by the way, starts tomorrow early on Good Morning Kentuckiana. New tonight, a Kentucky judge has struck down a law setting up funding for charter schools in the Commonwealth. Franklin County Circuit Judge Philip Shepard ruled that the 2022 law violated Kentucky's Constitution. Charter schools would be publicly funded but have fewer regulations because they're operated by independent groups. Governor Bashir vetoed the bill during the 2022 session, but the legislature overrode that veto. 
And all new tonight since six, it was a celebration of community and light at the Traeger Family Jewish Community Center as they marked the fifth night of Hanukkah. Mayor Craig Greenberg and his wife Rachel there helping light the menorah tonight. The annual celebration comes at a time of unrest in the Middle East and anti-Semitism. Organizers say that makes it even more important to be together. I think it's a great time for our community to be together and you can tell by the crowd here that the community wants to celebrate together and to spend time together and spread light and peace to the world. It's obviously such a hard time across the Middle East and we just pray for peace. The celebration included food, games and Hanukkah stories.